Hey folks, a few weeks ago we went to the Southern Sustainable Agriculture Conference in Mobile, Alabama. I had a great time, spent almost an entire week there uh, in various classes and learned a lot of stuff. And one of the most exciting courses that I sat through, I actually sat to, through, let's see, I think three presentations from a man named Trad Cotter uh, from Mushroom Mountain in uh, South Carolina. Uh, I'll try to remember to put a link in the description uh, beneath this video for you to go check out his website. Uh, but anyway, he made me understand for the first time that I didn't need, to, need to, didn't need to be afraid of trying to cultivate and grow uh, our own mushrooms here at Alderman Farms for our personal use and for sale. Um, of course, I picked up his book. I'll leave this here for a moment so you can grab it, uh, see, so that you can see the, the name and so forth. I highly recommend that you grab it. It's not very expensive. Extremely detailed, practical information, step by step. Um, and so depending on where you live and the type of mushroom that you would like to cultivate, it's really not as impossible as at least I thought it was uh, prior to meeting him, listening to him, and reading this book. Uh, so today, uh, we're going to be inoculating some hardwood logs that I cut last week. Um, and I'll tell you about that when I show you the logs and talk about why I cut them last week and doing it today uh, with uh, some uh, spawn plugs, I think that's what you call it. Uh, little dowels that have been inoculated with shiitake mushroom spawn and we're going to be inoculating those logs with that spawn uh, as uh, step one or I guess really step two of the process of raising our own mushrooms right here on Alderman Farms. So first let's go take a look at the logs and I'll tell you about that. So here are the logs I cut last weekend. By the way today is Sunday February 15th. And so one week ago today, uh, in, in the afternoon last Sunday, uh, I found a living uh, hardwood tree, kind of a trash hardwood tree, and uh, cut it into these links. The reason I cut them into the links that they are and, and found at the right diameter is because I'm gonna have to be moving these things. So I didn't want them to be so big and so heavy that it was impractical to move them around and turn them and whatnot. Uh, so why didn't I inoculate them that day? Why did I choose to do it one week later? Um, it, Looking around on the internet, there is a divergence of opinion on uh, how soon you should inoculate uh, logs, uh, drill holes in them, and put the plugs, uh, the spawn plugs in there uh, after you cut them. I uh, found one, at least one person said you need to do it within 72 hours. Other people say you can do it as much as a month later. Um, well, I liked, the, even though I'm certainly no expert, I'm extremely a newbie when it comes to mushrooms. I liked uh, Mr. Cotter's reasoning in the class and also in the book when he says one week is is ideal for him or he may not have said ideal but uh, one week sounded good to me and here's why if you wait longer than much longer than a week you give the opportunity for wild mushroom spores that are floating around uh, in the air to find this log and inoculate it so then when you put your spawn in there the other mushroom have already uh, the wild mushrooms have already gotten a jump on it and it, it, it becomes a competition and your mushrooms may lose. Uh, so you, and then you're not really sure what it is that you're, that you're sprouting. And as everybody knows, if you don't know for 100% sure what mushroom it is, you better not eat it because it could kill you. Uh, so I don't want to do that. But the reason he says to wait at least a week is because he maintains that for, up, for, for like a week after you cut the tree, the, the, it's still kind of alive in a sense, and, and, and any kind of uh, antibacterial property, I'm not saying that right, whatever it is, the property within a tree that kind of fights off, within a living tree that, that fights off uh, invasion by fungus and whatnot, is still active and it's going to be working against uh, your inoculation. And so I didn't want to do that. So we picked, I decided to follow his advice and, and we're going to be plugging our trees, uh, our logs, today, one week after they were cut. So, let's get started. You know, before we get into the process, uh, the steps that I'm about to take to plug these logs, let me show you my bag of um, spawn plugs. Uh, spores are when they're, I don't know, I'm not using any of the correct technical languages, little, little tiny, 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 tiny things. And once the spores have taken root on these 
uh, dowels, this is called a spawn plug. Uh, what you see, and you'll notice this is shiitake of the wide range variety. I think that has to do with the uh, climate in which they will thrive. Um, there's the, the uh, website and the phone number from mushroommountain.com. Uh, we bought these, uh, there's a hundred of them in this bag, I think for, they were for $10 at the conference that we were at in Mobile. I'm not sure what they are online, but uh, all the white stuff you see in there is mycelium. That's baby mushrooms. They are eating and spreading. There's some grain, and I don't remember what else he told us were in the bag to, to feed these things. And we've had them for several weeks. I brought them home and put them in the refrigerator for quite a few days to keep them dormant. And then we've had them out to sort of spring them to life just at room temperature in the house uh, for a number of days now. But this is what we're, we're going to be drilling holes in the logs. There are the logs again. Um, and I'm a, you'll get to see that happening um, part of the process. And we're going to tap these little plugs into the hole. We're going to cap the plug with wax. Um, I would assume paraffin wax would be fine. We just melted some beeswax that we collected from our beehives a few months ago. Uh, but anyway, just wanted to show you these, give you a good shot of the uh, website and the phone number and the address uh, if you wanted to get some spawn plugs of your very own. When selecting the drill bit, you want to match it to the size of the spawn plug. Uh, typical, as I understand it, is 5 16th. Uh, these plugs appear to be 5 16 there's no measurement on the bag, and so that's the drill bit that I've chosen is a 5 16 We're going to drill holes in the log approximately 4 inches apart, I'm not going to measure them, uh, in a diamond pattern. Um, so here we go, let's get started. And I'm going to drill them about the same depth as the plug. Once drilling is complete, this will be what the pattern looks like on all of these logs. Now for the sake of uh, video production, I'm not going to wait to do uh, all of the, drill all the logs before I show you the next step, but I wanted you to get a look at the diamond pattern that we will uh, implement all around these logs. I'm not going to do the bottom side. I could, but I'm not um, because I don't think I have, I've only got a hundred plugs and these little holes will add up um, before you know it. So. Next step is to, once all the holes are completed, the next step is to insert the plugs into the hole. So once all the holes are drilled, I'll come back and take one of these, uh, one of the spawn plugs for every hole, place it in the hole. I've got a hammer. I'm gonna tap it gently down into the hole until it becomes flush with the log. Then, I'm going to take beeswax, and again, paraffin wax or any kind of wax would suffice for this, to seal in the moisture. Uh-oh, my wax is uh, drying too fast. To seal in the moisture, I'm going to paint it over every one of the holes. Um, that'll seal in uh, the moisture. It'll also, I think, cause the mycelium to turn inward, and um, what we want, to do, want them to do is conquer this log. Um, so we're going to do that all over all these logs till I run out of plugs and then um, then we'll talk further. Thanks to Patty who's come out to help me uh, speed up the process. She's doing the uh, wax covering with the beeswax. That, so far that's been the most frustrating part of it is every few minutes she has to run back inside to uh, heat up the wax again because it sets so fast that it doesn't cover good. Um, I failed to mention the secondary reason why we plug cover the holes with wax, if I remember correctly from uh, the course and my reading, is to protect the baby mushroom spawn from predators, whether it be insects or invading uh, spawn. But uh, we're just about wrapped up, and so there will be a hundred plugs uh, spread over these, what is it, four, or five, six, seven logs and we'll stack them up and leave them alone. I don't remember, I need to check and see if I'm supposed to water them, but I'm not gonna worry about it because it's supposed to pour down rain in the morning. There they are, all stacked up nice. I need to, uh, like I said, I need to go back in and study the manual, see what's next. I don't think anything for a while. 
that wax will stay on there, you know, um, long enough. The wax will flake off, and but by that time, the mycelium will have established itself. Oh, that's what I meant to tell you about, you know, drilling all those holes in that, in that diamond pattern. What will happen now, uh, the next step as far as the mushroom mycelium are concerned, is that they will conquer these logs. It's the coolest thing. They will spread out and start almost, in a sense, communicating with each other, looking for uh, itself, as it were. And they'll spread out throughout this log, as my understanding, at a pretty rapid pace, and connect with each other and become one organism. So each of those little uh, spawn plugs will connect uh, the mycelium from each of the spawn plug will connect with the mycelium from the other spawn plug and they'll become one mycelium. Um, it's kind of creepy at the same time as <laughs> cool, but they will conquer these logs before they even begin thinking about fruiting, which is uh, the production of the actual mushrooms. So that's it for now because I'm not smart enough to tell you anything else at the moment, but I'll study up and add some stuff later. How about that? Alrighty, wasn't that easy? Easy peasy. Thanks. So when selecting a drill bit, obviously you want to match it to the plug size. It's my understanding that typical plug size is 5 sixteenths of an inch, which is what we have here. Hey Duke, you coming to inspect the process. It's always good to have a dog to help. Move. 5 sixteenths of an inch. And we're going to drill holes in the log approximately 4 inches apart uh, in a diamond pattern. I'm not going to measure it. I've got to start over because Duke won't move.